and welcome back to the Mark IV Stirling Engine project. So last time we tried to do a dynamometer run, uh, but things didn't quite work out. Um, we didn't quite get to actually uh, doing the run. Um, we had a problem with the hot uh, hot seal on the hot side. Um, basically, it blew out. <laughs> so uh, so we've taken it a bit. So, um, I've made some changes in a minute, which I'll show you right now. Right, so this is the new um, uh, seal that I've put on. So this is 3 millimeter. Um, three millimeter silicon rubber um, it's not reinforced or anything like that so it'd be quite interesting how it deals with the pressure I've also replaced the the spacer piece with a piece of vermiculite so it can uphold the temperature a bit better um, it's all this pole piston is a bit heavy really um, but it's, uh, it's it's what I've got for the moment um, and it'll certainly uh, prove a few things um, if I went to build the engine again I'd probably make it in a completely different way to what I have now <laughs> Um, but then that's, that's development for you. So there you go, that's that all installed, ready to go. I won't lie, the piston stability is a slight issue. I think given another shot, I would have made this perhaps about this long. And I reckon that would have solved a lot of our problems. Uh, they do use diaphragm seals in water pumps. Um... Uh, but with a slightly longer linkage and I wonder whether that is actually the secret to uh, the stability because at the moment the seal I'm going to move it out a bit at the moment the seal sort of will pivot around that like that but if it's further out there then I think I think it wouldn't really be able to pivot around it um, the only problem with making this change is I'd actually have to change the sort of the geometry of the engine um, because it would, I'd have to change li that would be moved up there, then I'd, that would change my uh, my angles and it would come out. It might work, but I, I'll I'll look into it if it becomes a real problem. But for the moment, I'm just going to hold hold with this design and uh, run it and, and see what happens. Uh, one more thing I've done to try and help with the uh, cooling of the cold side. Is I've made this uh, this fan, um, bit of a basic uh, rudimental fan, more of a wafter than a fan. Um, I'll show that in position in a bit to give you an idea. So there's our wafter in place. So hopefully that will just spin around a little bit, um, just create a little bit of air movement over the heat exchangers. Somebody pointed out in a more advanced design, um, I could actually use uh, use a fan to cool the heat exchangers, and then use that that air to actually feed the the furnace. So you so we'd actually have slightly preheated air to the furnace as well. I've also just put a metal grate on the front just to um, um, protect the uh, anybody from the the fan inside as well. Right, so there you go, all ready to go again. We're ready to give it a second go. Um, hopefully this time we can actually get a, a dynamometer reading. Um, and also we'll see how long this silicon uh, seal on the hot side works as well. Put your fingers on that thing. <laughs> oh, that's an easy start. The first thing is noticeable is the noise of the uh, silicon seal over the natural rubber one. Almost sounds like a ball bouncing. Also, we've got a bit of a, uh, I think it's hitting the uh, swing arm as well, which doesn't help the situation. Can you take it out again? Yeah, so uh, a little pad in there stops the knocking, so it is the knocking against the swing arm, which is majority of the problem. Come on now. It's not pretty, but it works.
So we're going to run it for about an hour, um, just to normalise all the temperatures. Uh, and then we'll try and take a power output. Okay, we're evolving. We've just added a piece of electrical insulation tape as well. Oh, it's got a hole in it. It's gone, is it? Yeah. Right, so if you see right there, there will be a leak. Right there, yeah. So we've got a leak. It's not surprising, really. There's quite a, there's quite a lot of misalignment with this thing, really. Um, I don't think anything sharp's come against it. Could you could you turn it over again, Dad, please? What, start it? Uh, no, just turn it over. I don't know if it's come again, up against anything. Stop there. As sharp as such. Cool. The the air coming out of the hot air engine is hot. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what's. I don't know what's caused caused it. It's like it's like it's being punctured. I don't think there's anything in there. Unless it's being hitting the uh, concrete inside. Mm-hmm. Right, so here we go. So we're going to measure the bottom one. Four hundred. Five hundred. Still going up. Five thirty. Five forty. Five fifty. Five seventy. Six. Six hundred. Should we call it six hundred? Yeah. Can you, can, you, can you do it above again, please? So this is above the heat exchanger again. Three eighty. About yeah, three eighty. Yeah, about three eighty. Same as before. Same as before. Yeah. So that's that. I think that mostly that's the heat that's being uh, taken out of the gases um, by the, uh, the heat exchanger. Um, obviously, some of it's being lost uh, through the casing of the thing. Uh, right, I'm using the laser on the PTFE. Um, actually, I might just stop the engine. Let's see that. Can you stop the engine now, please? Yeah, cheers. Right, let's hold it there. Uh, right, the temperature seems to be about 100 and... 30, 100, about 130 the temperature on this, uh, which is within the limits of uh, of silicon. Yeah, so so far, actually, as far as the limitations of the silicon go, not too bad. And considering I've got the damper right open, um, so the engine is about as hot as it's ever going to get. Um, we'll leave it another half an hour and see what we've got. Funny enough, even though we've got a hole, a hole in the uh, a hole right there. Um, it, it's not actually harming the running too much. It just leaks a little bit. So I'll go through the temperature gauges along the um, the cold side of the engine. Uh, so right next to the furnace, we're on uh, 200 degrees. Halfway down the cooler, we are on about 80 degrees. And on the cold side, we are on about 40 degrees. Uh, which is actually really good, actually. That's uh, not too bad at all. Well, I was just about to um, stop the engine, um, and then it, the seal was actually blown out of the bottom as well. So now we've got a huge wet hole on the bottom. Um, and I can actually split the whole seal. If I get my thing in there, I can literally split the seal. So it's obviously getting too hot, basically. And even this one up here, I can I can literally split the seal like that. So it's yeah, it's all got too hot. I would say.
All right, so I think we're going to abandon the test once again, unfortunately. Um, I mean, this, this is, the engine is obviously working, um, it's just not developing full power because it's got a hole in the, in the seal now, on the, silicon, on the silicon seal on this side. Um, quite why there's a hole in it, I, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't have thought it would be a defect in the material, but who knows. Um, so I'll take that off again and have a look at what's going on there. Um, and the other thing is the imbalance in these pistons as well. Um, it seems to be affecting how the gases are travelling from one side to another. So I think we're going to have to really think about what we're going to do now and um, try and move this project forward a little bit. Right, I'll, I'll see you next time. ta -da, bye! Yeah. Right, so we've just taken the seal off. So this is the first look at how things are inside. Right, so we've just, um, we've just taken it out. First thing you've noticed is this bit here is missing. Um, and over this area here, where we actually had a hole in the seal, uh, there's actually impact damage here. So what we reckon might have happened is uh, this has come off, um, broken into pieces perhaps, and got caught between this, the seal and the, and the concrete here, uh, which might explain why we, we've ended up with a hole in the silicon. Um, and it, there is a possibility the same might have happened at the bottom as well. So that, that is a chance why the silicon has actually failed to start with, maybe. I mean, the heat has obviously had, a, uh, had an effect as well. So close examination, uh, the seal has suffered from fatigue in a fair few places. If you look down here, you can see it. Stress, like the stress fracture, very slightly. Of course, um, of course, it might be the actual thickness of the silicon that's causing the problem by having it thicker. It's actually causing it to, to fracture, maybe. I don't know.